So let's go ahead and turn it forward a little bit to the Cavaliers. They're off to a one-on-one start. Uh, you know, difficult loss in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, then they turn around and blow out Memphis. You know, watching this team, Chris, uh, one of the things that stands out to me is we're not going to have any idea about how good this team can be until number two's back on the floor, really. Yeah. It's so hard to judge this team right now. Right, and, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens, too, Dan, when Kyrie comes back, just in terms of who slides into what role. Yeah. Um, because right now, Kevin Love looks extremely comfortable as the number two option offensively, and, and LeBron even talked about it. After the game last night, we're going to feature him more. He's going to be the all-star that yeah. he's always been. Um, you wonder just how different things are going to be when Kyrie comes back and he becomes the number two option. Kevin slides to the number three option. And you wonder if, if maybe the iso ball that we saw at times with the Cavs last year is also going to return because you don't want to take that out of the mix completely with a guy like Kyrie because... He's so dazzling, and he can break anybody down one-on-one. -on -one. So um, the way that they're playing right now, um, it's, it's hard to see how that's going to change or how much that's going to change when Kyrie and Iman come back. All right. Well, let's ask that same question to our Cavaliers beat reporter, Chris Haynes, who joins us now via phone. Just landed getting in from Memphis. Chris, how are you? I'm doing all right, guys. All right, Chris, uh, so Fedor and I were talking about kind of judging this team without Kyrie Irving, how difficult it is. So as you watch this team uh, before he comes back, what, what are you really looking at? What are you trying to get a sense of? Um, you want to see if they can continue to, to keep up the offensive continuity but by, you know, passing the ball, sharing the ball, mm -hmm. keep keeping that alive. Because if you have a system that's predicated on ball movement and finding open shots there, you can pretty much bring in any type of player later on and get him to kind of buy into that. Because if you got four, 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 four of the other guys already doing that, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty, pretty easy transition for that fifth guy to come in and follow suit. So, yes, I, I think everybody wants to see how Kyrie is going to translate over uh, to this team when, when he gets back. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a cinch for him because uh, – I think the Cavaliers are still going to be pretty good without him. And so I think when he comes back, uh, he's not going to try to do anything to mess up, mess up what's going on. Chris, it's only been two games, but Kevin Love and his return from a dislocated left shoulder, first game against Chicago, scores eight points in a minute and a half against the Bulls, getting the Cavs in position to steal that game on the road. Last night against Memphis, he looks like all-star version of Kevin Love from the Minnesota days. What do you feel like is different for Kevin so far this year? He looks more athletic hmm. than he has, you know, in any other year in his, in his career. He looks I, – I, I don't think I'm just saying that just because of the, the weight loss. I, I think he's slimmer than he's ever, ever been. Hmm. He just looks more uh, – he, he, he looks more quicker. You know, first step is, is, is just a pass, you know, it's past his defender. And I, I, I will say this, on the defensive end as well, he, he's moving a lot better, man. He's moving his feet. He, he got a block shot that, that stands out to me in that Chicago game against uh, somebody who was taking him off the drive. Uh, he, he, looks, he looks really good. He, he does. I know it's been six months. Uh, it was six months in between games for him. And he, he's probably just fresher than a lot of guys. But I, I don't know, man. I think with the way, the way his body is shaped now, I think he's more suited to play a more up-tempo type game and not just be that outlet pass that we know that starts to break to everybody else. He, he looks really good, guys. And I think if he can hold up mm -hmm. and withstand injuries, he, he has the potential to have a really special year. And, and, and no doubt about it, I think he could definitely make a case that he probably should be an all-star this year if he continues that. Chris, what did you make of LeBron's comments after the game about uh, featuring Kevin Love, making him the focal point of the offense? LeBron is going out of his way to do whatever he can to make Kevin feel comfortable. Mm. Kevin didn't feel comfortable at all last year, period. He didn't feel comfortable on the court. He didn't feel comfortable off the court. And that's not something that he's going to admit, but that, that's, that's the simple reality of it. And LeBron James wants to make sure Kevin Love feels comfortable and, and he's what he's doing right now, he's vouching for Kevin. Hmm. Uh, he, he's showing him uh, in, in the public eye that he believes in him. Kevin and Fixo. And Kevin even mentioned 
last night that in that meeting in L.A., he wanted to convey to LeBron James and, and relay to him that he could do more. Huh. Like, trust me, you can, I, I can do more. And for LeBron James is showing him right there that, look, I trust you, God. I'm giving you the platform. Do your thing. I'm going to do everything I can. And you look at last night. There was a couple of plays that LeBron called on his own. Uh, and they were for Kevin Love, where, where LeBron would drive and do a cross court pass to Kevin Love for a three uh, last night. Mm-hmm. You know, he's doing things to try to make sure Kevin stays engaged. Because I, I think that's for the betterment of, of the team. Chris, uh, it's a little disconcerting to see LeBron go to the sideline and lay down on the sideline and cover up under about. 10, 15 towels, whatever it is. Uh, you know, you start thinking about guys like Steve Nash who had back issues, you know, Larry Bird a little bit. Uh, are you concerned at all about what you're seeing? A, a little bit, but he, he's always had back issues the last four years, maybe even the last five years. And, um, you know, back issues usually tend to stir up during the early parts of the season. Uh, guys are trying to get in shape, get their body intact. Sasha Connor dealing with a little bit of that himself. You know, that that happened. Uh, LeBron James, didn't, he didn't have a rigorous preseason. He only played two exhibition games, held out a lot, a, a lot of practices. So he wasn't able to get himself into tip-top shape and to kind of let it back, uh, you know, get in order. So first part of the week or the season is going to be used for, you know, getting in shape and hopefully getting that, uh, getting that back okay. I, now, if he, now, if he's laying on the floor all season long, yeah, that's a problem. But if this is just uh, a thing that happens when guys, you know, start the season off like it tends to happen, then I, I think he'll be fine. Chris, I remember having a conversation with David Griffin after losing in the NBA Finals, and, and one of the things that I asked him was just, like, what did you see from Golden State that you felt like they had that you didn't besides health? And, and he said something, and it stood out to me. He said they had more playmakers than we did. Seeing Mo Williams out there running the offense, leading the team in assists against Chicago, that kind of guy. Chris, they didn't have that kind of guy last year. He seems like he's fitting perfectly. Yeah, and yeah, he's finally happy that it's the regular season. We you see how bored he was with the preseason. But no, that, that that was that was one of the reasons why they brought Mo here. You know, to be a a playmaker, to be a facilitator, to be a scorer. So he he's doing everything he he's doing everything that the team asked of him, and he's a guy that also knows his role. He understands that when Kyrie comes comes back, he's going to step into to that second unit and be asked to uh, to fill a different role. So he's a perfect guy perfect guy for this time, time and juncture with what this team is going through right now. And uh, believe it or not, he's only going to get better, man. I cover Mo in Portland. Mm. And uh, I've seen what he was capable of doing. And he hasn't even he hasn't even reached that comfort level yet. He's still trying to fill everybody out. So he, he, he's going to be, at the end of the day, between him and Richard Jefferson, man, they have to, you know, those will be the, the two, possibly the two biggest additions the Cav, Cavaliers have made with this team. All right, Chris, appreciate you calling in. Thanks for the time. No problem, guys. Take care.